Welcome back to Blockchain Pill, my name is Alex and today my guest is going to be Isaac Valadez who is currently the Code and State Venture Lead. We'll start our discussion talking about the Internet Computer Protocol in general and how he ended up in the ICP ecosystem and following that we will discuss the ICP Community Conference. There is going to be a lot of influencers, a lot of projects involved and a lot of sponsors involved. So stay tuned and without further ado, let's jump straight into this podcast. Isaac, it's a pleasure to have you here, my friend. First of all, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you ended up in the ICP ecosystem. I don't know how far back you want to start, but I guess I'll go all the way back, right? So I've always wanted to be an inventor. And uh, ever since I went into school, I think my first day in college, I was like, I want to be an inventor. Who should I talk to? And so I uh, I got introduced to somebody who became a close mentor. And that's really where I got involved into tech startups. And uh, fast forward was kind of like a normal, like, like entrepreneurial career with a few different startups in kind of the web two tech startup scene. And, uh, and, and fast forward to maybe 2017, at the time, I was working on a um, web design and digital marketing company, but that's around when I first started getting involved deeply into crypto. And uh, and, and then, uh, you know, fast forward a little bit further, and that's when I, 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 uh, I got a YouTube notification on my phone for the Genesis launch event. And that was the first time I ever heard about ICP. I think for a lot of people uh, in, within the ecosystem, that's when they first heard about ICP. And uh, I remember it was like a Sunday and uh, I, I got my Definity shirt, like in that in the airdrop that they had in the Genesis event, and uh, I really just I, I felt like like whatever was going to be the future of Web three, it would have to be so stinking similar to what I was hearing that like I had to get involved with with this, right? So I um I, and and I just loved you know Dom's incredible vision for all of it, and and uh, and really that's that was it for me. That's when I got it. Like, like start working at least part-time as an enthusiast within the ecosystem. Well, I posted a, uh, a, a post on Discover and that connected me with Dukakis, who was at the time running the um, Definity community, like a, a little publication with OGs way back in the day. And then th through that, I met Seb and we, we, we got started on the D Squad NFT project. And then after that, I did uh, a small grant for Definity to make the NNS proposal submission job. And that was the very first way to like submit a proposal to NNS without using the command line. I had a grant and invented in Taggle um, during like a jobless period where I was transitioning to work into Web3 in full time. And uh, January 1st of last year, I finally made the switch. So I start working for Code and State full time. And it's been quite an adventure ever since. I want to say you're such a great speaker. Like this is the second time we're actually speaking on a show. The first time I was on your channel. Now you are on my channel. I want us to go a little bit into Code and State and uh, you know what you are doing for Code and State and what Code and State does inside the ICP community. And later I want us to discuss about the ICP community conference that happened in 2023. So let's start with Code and State. What exactly is Code and State and what are you doing at Code and State? Code State is a venture studio, which is basically a fancy way of saying a, a, a company that creates companies. Um, and it's it's also can be thought of as an alternative to, to pre-seed funding. So with pre-seed funding or, or most types of VC funding, you get a fixed amount of uh, money for a fixed amount of equity. Um, and with Code and State and with other types of incubators, we basically offer one to two years of runway, meaning that you're, you're Founder salaries costs are covered, as well as any other costs you need are covered. So all your runways covered for one or two years, if you're on, on a starting events with the IC, and uh, as well as help with marketing, legal, um, UI, UX, and really just the idea is, it's already so hard to build within a niche like Web three, and then it's even harder to build within a, a, an emerging niche within that like ICP, right? Where there's still a lot of missing building blocks. We want to make it as easy as possible for founders to focus on product market fit as much as possible. And uh, and so we want to abstract away some of these things that, you know, we've seen uh, a, lot, a lot of founders struggle with legal, for example, um, and, uh, and, and you know, like like finding ways to, to help founders really uh, get ahead and get past these barriers so they can get to their next big step. And so the idea is after one to, uh, one to two years, a, a venture would um, move on to do their Series A or their decentralization. So whatever the next big step is and what that means for their venture, and we would keep 20% equity just like a pre-seed um, a VC would, but but we gave them more hand-holding and more help um, than, than just throwing money at them and saying, go figure it out, right, basically. And so the origins of it, our two co-founders are Artia and Cedric. Both have their roots uh, just as, as VCs in general and being involved in the Definity Foundation. So I think Artia was the general manager of Definity up until around Genesis launch, and he's a VC as well as uh, Cedric. 
Cedric's been a VC for like 15 years now. He has an incredible background. I think he started his first company at 14 years old. Um, and he's just got an incredible story. I think a few months into me starting my role, he shared a video and it was him breaking the world record for number of countries traveled to. It was in 24 hours. It was like 35 countries in 24 hours. It's insane. And so he was a founding board member of Definity. And uh, he left a little bit before Genesis to start Tomahawk VC, which is, was kind of like a m more normal uh, VC uh, firm that invested in Discover and a lot of the other big projects. And that's when he started really thinking through um, bringing in a venture studio model into our ecosystem to create something a little bit similar to like the consensus of the IC, but where consensus, they keep everything internal. We wanted to have this program where, where projects launch and they're external from us and they're their own entity that move on and do bigger things beyond beyond just being in part of our portfolio. We're probably about a year and a half old now. Last year, our main focus was building some internal ventures that were covering the main building blocks that we saw, felt like we're missing. So if you remember being in, within ICP early last year, it was like really hard to find talent. There wasn't really a good way to get audits, all that kind of stuff. So we have Solid State, which is the first ICP native code auditing agency. And we, we just finished up the audit for IC Dex, their pre-SNS audit. And we have another exciting audit coming up soon. And then we have TalentDB, which was the first ICP native talent agency. And we've helped probably like 20 job placements across a lot of the top ICP pro projects out there. And then we have uh, Matoka Bootcamp. So there's a free uh, weekly, I think there's actually two workshops per week with absolutely like not setting up your coding environment natively or, or paying any money. You can launch your first smart contract within 60 minutes and it's all free. And then we also have a free weekly bootcamp as part of that. And a um, they just launched a couple of weeks ago, Seb launched the... Uh, a self-paced course, the first like self-paced education course on the IC, which is really exciting. And then we have ICPCC, the first conference series of the IC. So as part of our portfolio, when projects join, and we, we are looking to have maybe two or three projects join our, our external projects join our portfolio this year, who will go through our acceleration program. Uh, we can kind of help give them access to audits, talent, exposure to the conference, whatever they need. And uh, yeah, so that's what we're doing as a venture studio. And it's been a, a wild ride. I kind of run the date stay of the studio underneath the founders. And it's been, uh, it's been really cool coming from like the perspective of being a web two tech entrepreneur to like seeing how web three VCs and entrepreneurs think and working with Cedric and RG, I've been learning a lot and just getting really ingrained in the ecosystem has been incredible. We have a lot of great builders here and, and, uh, yeah, no, being from somebody who just came from like being a fan of the ICP ecosystem to being like connected and getting to see a lot of alpha behind the scenes and everything. It's been about as awesome as you can imagine. <laughs> and this goes to show like how many opportunities there are in Web3, especially now because we're in the beginning. And I want to say oh, yeah. it is incredible how much you guys decided to expand inside a single ecosystem like the Internet Computer Protocol. And how are you guys so confident to bet so much and so big inside the ICP ecosystem? What do you see in ICP that you don't see anywhere else? And one word, pragmatism. Frankly, we've realized that, like, uh, I think as an ecosystem, how during the bear market, the price kept going down and we felt like outliers. We felt weird from the rest of the L1 blockchains because people would go into the internet computer and I've heard people say, like, it didn't feel Web3 enough. Well, I have a Google login and I don't have to have MetaMask. I don't need to memorize free seed phrases. These are all like pros, but like it just it feels weird when people are used to like this EVM paradigm. Um, but, but the reason that we're so invested, and I think the re the reason that so many people who I call them crypto curious, they're, they're like people who maybe aren't full-time in web three yet because they see a bunch of meme coins and stuff that doesn't make sense to them, but they believe in the ethos of decentralization and what web three ultimately should have stood for. ICP is a pragmatic blockchain. Like we, 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 we took a look at the tech stack, realized if we're ever going to create something that competes with AWS, we need to get serious and use enterprise grade hardware and from scratch, rethink what a blockchain is and how do you make a network of enterprise grade hardware decentralized? And that's just a very pragmatic approach. And uh, something like ICB couldn't have been invented the way that Ethereum was invented. And it might not be, it wasn't as Web3 flavored, I think early on, but people are realizing that it is decentralized now and they're, they're really coming around, especially after the price pump. But yeah, it's a, it's a pragmatic blockchain. I, I think that we're the chain that's going to make Web3 useful. We're the chain that's going to help give Web3 its use case. And, you know, that, that aligns with what Cedric and Artie is like every VC has their focus and what they're comfortable with. And some VCs are okay with just investing in like pure hype. And there's lots of pure hype in Web3. There's lots of just money chasing money and, and circling around. And there's nothing inherently wrong with that. 
but ultimately we need a, a true foundation. We need an actual like like pragmatic impact on the world, like like things that can only be built with Web three tech. And I think ICP is a change where it's going to happen. And, and I, I realized that we we attract the builders that are inspired by the like wanting to do pragmatic real world solutions with Web three. We attract the investors and the VCs that are interested in real world pragmatic solutions. So like. Yeah, I guess if I had to sum it up in one word, the reason that we're so invested deeply within ICP is the fact that that uh, it's pragmatic and it's gonna and it's, and it's more useful than any other chain out there. Other chains say they're Web three, wishing they had what ICP has. So we can host entire applications on chain. We have more than a few successful uh, DApps already running on the Internet Computer Protocol. What I really like about ICP is the people who are still around are going to be around for a while because listen, everybody can agree like it was a brutal yeah. downwards movement for, for ICP. The yeah. people that are still here, they are diehard fans and believers in the ICP vision and, and community. Yeah. And I, I think that is very important. Price is never going to shake them out. It would If it, Price would have shaken them out and scared them away, they would have gone yeah two and a half years ago right yeah <laughs> they're, they're, they yeah and, you know i've actually thought that and i've had this thought before um definitely i think that the, the recent price pump came at an opportune moment however that period that we had that really long testing period trial by fire if you will was was actually very healthy because when it does settled after the initial price drop when the mainnet launched because i bought icp at at 350 token um my very first eight year neuron what it cost me um a lot of money. I has like five, five ICP that was bought at that price, and uh, but no regrets because like when it dust settled, we we kind of like looked around at who was left, and we realized, hey, there's a lot of like really smart people that I respect, like Jordan Lass and Bob Bollies and like 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 Rick Porter's, like these people, like see the same value I do. We're not crazy. Let's just let's just build, and the value will come. And then it's been you know we spent a few years, but it felt like getting back to crypto's original roots, because that's how it all started. In the, in, the, in, the, in the very beginning, it was just a bunch of crypto crunks that were upset about the 2008 financial collapse that read a white paper. They liked it. And they were just a small group of nerds being ignored by everybody else, just focusing on building something that they thought the world needed. And ultimately, like, 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 like we got to revisit that. And I think that was a very special and like healthy and unique thing. And, and I think that when, People kind of wake up in the next bull cycle and like, oh, hey, right, what's going on with crypto? Well, who's built cool stuff? They're just going to be absolutely blown away when they see what's happening on ICP. They're going to have that aha moment of realizing, oh, I, 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 it's not just going to be meme coin chasing or, or like quick flips. Like th there's actually going to be apps that people can use and not even realizing that it's Web3, but getting value that only Web3 can provide. And that's something that I think ICP can, is the only chain that's situated to be able to do. And, and we, we make other chains more useful. Like, I think the fact that we can add decentralized automated actors on Ethereum, any EVM chain or, and Bitcoin, like that's that's the, the best type of integration because usually integrations you have to build on each chain and have a bridge meet in the middle. But with ICP, you just build from our side over there and you can do anything you want. And like that adds more value to EVM than anything that's been built on EVM to this point. And, uh, and the implications of what hybrid dApps will be able to do are just limitless at this point. So, you know, you know, it would be, I don't think people will even be talking about ICP. I think it's just going to be a baseline assumption. You have to use it if you're going to build in Web3. We've seen many hacks over the years with uh, funds trapped in bridges, which were stolen by hackers. Safety is an issue when you're talking about hundreds of millions of dollars. You need to be sure that your money are safe. And I recently saw Dominic tweet something about the internet identity being approved for W3C, something where you will be able to use your internet identity to verify, for example, your age or whatever in Web2 without actually disclosing your private information, which I think like it's, it's mind blowing because when you connect with your gmail to a website you give away all your information there and yeah. every two three months there is a, a data breach and you need to change all of your passwords and with the internet identity which is a huge innovation those things are something of the past so i'm looking forward to see how people are going to use the tools built by definity to leverage basically the icp tech today i want us to talk about the icp CC. And for the people that are new and don't know about it, first of all, what is the ICP Community Conference? Yeah, sure. So, I mean, ICP Community Conference is just exactly what it sounds like. It's a conference um, by the community for the community that started in, in uh, we had our first event in 2023. And it essentially started with, you know, we're, we're two years since mainnet launched roughly. And, and we we're like, 
we have so much to celebrate, but none of our innovators have been given the proper stage or like the proper way to like be highlighted. So Econ State Cedric was just like, look, I, I'm just going to fund this out of pocket. Like, we, I just want to make this happen. Isaac, go plan me a conference. And it was quite an adventure because I was pretty nearly hired. And normally, like conferences take about nine months to plan, <laughs> if like properly done. I had three and a half months and I'd never done any event planning before. So uh, to say I was stressed was an understatement. It was an absolute adventure to plan. Um, and I had a great team behind me. I started working with uh, Esteban and Ricardo at the time. They had planned a huge event um, called Vibrant uh, in, in Argentina prior. And so, yeah, we, we set off in the adventure and um, we didn't know what was gonna, what was gonna happen. And I tell you what, like it was an absolute highlight of my career. It was one of the most special things I've ever been able to be a part of. We had a, a, a conference with around 150 attendees. Um, almost everybody, like 98% of them flew out from other countries. And they were almost all like top founders and innovators or VCs, investors in the space. And, and it was at a big Qatar-shaped skyscraper in Miami. Um, like I saw the photo of the place a lot in planning it. There's nothing like, like when you first walk in, it's absolutely astounding. Um, and so we we're really happy with how the venue turned out. And, you know, when you hire vendors, like these vendors who do the, the um, audio visual and the, and the food catering and, and the, the camera recording, all of that, this is what they do for a living. They, they go to events all of the time, right? And so all of the vendors basically came to me at one point and said that this was the most like energy filled and exciting event they'd ever been to, which is something huge for somebody who does that for a living. They do events for a living to say that. And I had multiple people say it was one of the most uh, the well organized and best uh, crypto events that they had been to. And I think it was because it was just the right size. Like it was kind of like a tight knit group. We could create the setting, but but the vibe was um, was really something truly special. Like, for example, Rick Porter, he had been working with his community manager at that point for two years. And that was the first time they met in person was, was our conference. Like it was just really meaningful. I think it was the first time that the, all these innovators were meeting each other at the same time and then being highlighted on stage. Some of them underestimated. They're like, oh, this is going to be like a meetup. And uh, some of the speakers got intimidated because when you walked up on that stage, it was full production, lights hitting, you couldn't see anybody out there. And, and, and a few of them, like once they showed up and they saw the venue and everything in the stage, they're like, uh, um, I'm going to need to make some changes to my print. You know, they start scrambling and everything. And it, it, was, it was an absolute adventure, man. It was, really, it was really special, but not because of anything that we did or anything I did as a planner. It was special because this ecosystem and this community is special. And it was something that we needed during the bear market because it was like, bear market was rough. But to see why those other smart people you respect, to see the, the passion and excitement in their eyes and, and, and uh, this is a re there's a reinforcement to that in-person vibe that you just can't get virtually. It was a really special time. And uh, and yeah, this year, I think we're gonna do something that's never been done before and we've never seen before, and it's gonna be even bigger and better and it's gonna be a whole different animal. So like, it's, it's uh, I can't wait to share more about it. And there's very few details have been put out there so far. So y'all are gonna get the first peek. And I think part of the magic of the ICP CC 2023 was the fact that, as you said, for the first time, people in the ICP ecosystem were getting to meet one another. And I've been to some crypto events. You don't really know anybody. And it's it's sometimes awkward to get in touch and to talk to somebody. But if you know it's it's the people that you've been talking, you know, in open chat groups or on X or, you know, you, you did yeah. partnerships with them. That's the magic there. And I can, I can understand, you know, getting nervous when you go on stage and, you know, you need to talk in, in front of a lot of people. But I really like the way you guys did it. And with the presenter, Jesse did a, a great job a on great stage. Job. Yeah, as a presenter. And so many great speakers. And afterwards, you guys did those uh, podcasts, which is uh, the first time when we talked was one, on one of those podcasts with Funded with Luke. I'm looking forward to see how ICPCC 2024 is going to be, knowing how cool and how great it was in 2023. So what do you think was the impact of this successful event that you guys did in 2023 on the ICP community as a whole? Like, did it, do you think it, it strengthened it? Yeah, did it bring more people into the ICP ecosystem? How, how do you think the impact was seen from the outside? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, sometimes the impact is even more, more so on the inside. Like, you know, when you're just a community member and you're, you're seeing all these voices posting on X and everything, it can seem like, oh, this guy's like the, the most diehard um, ICP fan. Like, he's someone who gives me confidence. There's no way that he has any doubts. And, uh, and yeah, no, like when you really like get, to, get to talk to them in DMS and, and you meet them in person, you might realize that, no, they, they have serious doubts about the bear market and like, like the tech and where it's going and, and that's normal and that's natural. There's a deep level of mutual encouragement and support. 
between all of these voices and these innovators and these founders that was really catalyzed in person that continued past the event. I think basically encouragement, like you might not see it very much on the outside externally, but it was so fundamentally needed and important and um, applied beyond the event uh, on the inside. So, I mean, I think that it really helped encourage these builders who have been, imagine building for two years when all the price is going down and it seems like everything's crashing and burning around you and you just keep the faith and you're building and you're putting your livelihood on the line, you're putting your friend's livelihoods on the line, you have a bunch of investors. Like these founders are under pressure. So to be celebrate it, highlight it, encouraged by your peers. Um, that was huge for a lot of them, right? And I think that helped strengthen a lot of our founders to get them to, through the roughest paths. Because really after the event is when I would say the roughest paths for the bear market was, like right before the pump. It helped, I, I think that our event was really important for helping get and encourage founders through that tough period so they could get to this pump and get to the point where now, if they do reach out to a publisher, they aren't just completely ignored. now. When they post, it does get retweeted beyond just the ecosystem. And, you know, now there's more encouraging factors naturally. So yeah, I think that was a big impact. There are a lot of partnerships that were facilitated. A lot of times it's just, you know, those, you wouldn't, they wouldn't have reached out to each other virtually, but they were standing next to each other, um, getting drinks in the after party to stroke up a conversation, realized that there was some partnership opportunity. So like a lot of partnerships within the ecosystem really started at this event. And uh, it's a really great like uh, type of internal catalyst for building up the, the innovators and supporting, having to support one another. It is completely one thing to reach out to somebody on X or on open chat in, and it is a completely different thing to talk to them in person. And as you said, like partnerships are going to be a lot stronger and are going to happen at least more frequently than if you were to reach out to somebody. In the ICP 2023 edition, you guys had a pitch event where founders had the opportunity to pitch their ideas in front of VCs. Do you have any success stories of projects that took off following the ICP CC 2023? It's hard to tell because uh, you have to kind of specifically ask it. So I should probably pit it on my, on my docket to follow up with some of those. So there's about five pitch presenters. Other than just the ones there, you know, like I know that uh, there were other startups that did find VCs and, and they get funding out of that event. And I know there are people who got jobs because they went and they met uh, founders. And it really, like I actually got my job at Code State after going to a Code State meetup um, in like the November uh, of, of, of the year prior. So I would say that, you know, if your dream is to kind of break into Web3 in any capacity, whether that's as a founder finding investors, whether that's as someone who wants to work full-time in Web3 by finding a job, as an influencer who wants to start building a following, in-person events are going to be really important, right? That's that's where you can really start to catalyze and build those stronger connections. And, and uh, yeah, I mean, there's kind of like, you start to recognize the people who always go to events. Like Rick Porter is at almost every, like he'll, he'll fly around to any ICP event. So if, if you go to an ICP event, you're going to probably run into Rick Porter. But that's what, he's like in the inner circle. Like he knows the VCs in the space so well that he'll like sleep on their couches at their mansion and they like have a, I have a place for him, right? Because he's just very well connected. He understands the value of showing up, right? And it's the people who show up who, who basically get the opportunities. So yeah, for anybody out there, just I would encourage like find the right events to go to, right? If, if you're serious about breaking into Web3, that's the way to do it. For the regular person, I think going to, you know, different countries to go to attend to events is a little bit difficult. But if I'm not mistaken, ICPCC 2024 tries to expand and increase the chances of regular people actually get to network with, with others. I saw on, on your website that there's going to be a global edition. So now let's go into ICPCC 2024. What does the global edition mean? And how are you planning to onboard new users to the ICP ecosystem? Yes, exactly. So this year, I'm extremely excited to try out this new format. And just for context, we're not going to be abandoning the like more traditional conference format that we did last year. So going into 2025, the, I, the grand vision is to actually do uh, one of each type of event. So we'll do like a, a kind of a, a big normal conference, big stage, and that's kind of more the internal celebration for the ecosystem. And then we'll do a global event. And this global event is very much more of an like external event for the ecosystem. And I'll get into what that means because there's two big problems that we want to solve with this next iteration that kind of led to the design of this new type of event. And first off, don't think of it as a virtual conference. It's not the right description. Think of it as an onboarding event, a global onboarding event for the ecosystem. So, because that's really the first problem we wanted to solve is the conference was great and needed in what it was, but it's very, very internal. Nobody was learning about ICP for the first time. Nobody was learning the basics of ICP. No one was like, like there were people who showed up who didn't know about ICP, don't get me wrong, and they got excited about it. But 
but that was the people who showed up in person, right? It wasn't it wasn't uh, as, as inclusive as we would like. Like we were very inspired by the Genesis launch event. I think the Genesis launch event, like most people in the ecosystem today, learned about ICP through that. And so we're we're thinking, how can we make this more external? How can we make it more welcoming and 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 really converting Bitcoin and ETH maxis into understanding what the value that ICP is offering them for what they love? You don't have to stop being a Bitcoin maxi or an ETH maxi. Just just see how ICP is contributing to it. And just onboarding them, like giving them the basic information that they need, the way that the Genesis event was very accessible. They could you could see it online, you could be a part of it and get excited about it. So onboarding, like that's the first problem we want to solve. And number two was inclusivity and accessibility. Like there are people who love ICP who could not attend the last conference. It was just, it was just too, it's, you know, not everybody can fly out to a different country for a few days um, for, for an event like that. And, uh, you know, it, the ticket price was expensive because it was a big ticket event. So we wanted something that everybody who loves ICP anywhere in the world can be part of. They can have an in-person component as well. We don't want to lose that. We love that. We think the in-person component is extremely important. Um, but also we can collectively double or triple the size of the ecosystem. And with this new design, I think that we're going to achieve that. Um, and it's, so it's a, it's an entirely different flavor of event with a different type of purpose. So it's, it's a basically the next big onboarding wave for ICP since Genesis. And so how exactly will it work the, this uh, like global theme of ICPCC 2024? Like I said, we didn't want to miss the in-person connection part, so we took a very meetup-centric approach. So the event is on May 10th, which is a Friday afternoon, and um, we we designed it so that at each point in the globe, there will be a time, uh, what we call like a prime time, where you can meet after work and spend and and, uh, and you'll have a, a whole meetup watch party based around that prime time of, of like 45 minutes. So you, the idea is, you know. On May 10th, wherever you are in the globe, you can go after work to a meetup that's maybe three or four hours long. And then 45 minutes of that is watching um, a, a great live stream that explains the basics of ICP in a very accessible way. That's also still exciting and like a re-celebration for people who already love ICP. And, um, and they have those free accessible meetups just all over the globe. So we have three prime times to achieve that. One for Asia Pacific, it's the ICPCC pre-party. One for Europe time and, and Europe and kind of like India time zones in Australia, and then one uh, for uh, the Americas, uh, for you know in North America, South America, Canada, all of that. Um, so yeah, it kind of the way that fits, it works out for every time zone to have a meetup in, in their afternoon, um, and the the prime time content will be like uh, like take one important thing is like the Bitcoin integration um, and like how does ICP integrate with Bitcoin. So instead of that being described like it was in Genesis as like a future far out roadmap item, like it's achieved now. And we actually have innovators using it. So in Asia Pacific, we're, we're invited, for example, Andy, who leads local mining, and they're making the first decentralized mining pool. So he can be like, hi, my name is Andy. I'm creating the first decentralized mining pool um, for Bitcoin. And the reason I'm able to do that is, is here's how Bitcoin integrates, uh, ICP integrates with Bitcoin. And then like the same, in, uh, that, would be, that same slot will be given to Bitfinity in uh, the European time zones. And they would also explain the Ethereum integration. And then the Bitcoin uh, integration time slot would be given to uh, Bob Bodley in the USA. So you can be like, I'm, hey, my name is Bob. I created the first gasless or those marketplace. The way I was able to do that is how ICP is a decentralized user of Bitcoin. And it you know, kind of describes that. And so the idea is we all have Bitcoin maxi friends and Ethereum maxi friends, because you know if you're involved in Web3, you've got people you talk to with it. You can be like, you know, it, it'd be hard to be like, hey, let's go fly out to Miami for, for three days, right? That's kind of a big ask. But instead, with this, you can be like, hey, let's uh, let's go get some free pizza downtown Friday afternoon and meet some other cool Web3 people. And then they go and they see brilliant people all over the world explaining what ICP has to offer, what they already love within Web3. And now you've converted your buddy into an, another like IC person, right? And if the whole ecosystem is doing that globally, the same time and the same day with all of the, the connections that they have uh, external to Web3 or even just their Web2 friends who are interested in Web3, I think that that's going to be huge for growing the ecosystem. And the prime time in Europe kicks off a nine hour live stream that then ends with the prime time in the US. So uh, this huge live stream going on basically all day um, and the, the chunk of time between the two prime times, uh, we are allocating... Uh, anywhere between 20 to 30 minute slots to content creators and uh, pretty much every single top content creator 
within the ICB ecosystem, including yourself. Uh, thanks, <laughs> Blockchain and Pill. You've all agreed to take the time slots already. You're all excited about it. You're going to be restreaming it on your different platforms. So like like uh, Jerry Bannerfield is, is really big on Kick and Twits, and he's going to be restreaming it there. Um, our host, Blockchain Boy, has like over 600,000 followers, or roughly, or, or something like that on TikTok, and he's going to be restreaming it there. But I think Bitfinity is going to help us find some other KOLs, just general Web3 KOLs, so they can do like an unboxing type of thing, content where they themselves are discovering ICP for the first time. So it's going to be pretty huge, I think, because with uh, with every, all these content creators restreaming it across all platforms, you, we won't be able to throw a rock that, on a May 10th without hitting a, a live stream that that teaches you about the basics of ICP in a really engaging and exciting and accessible way. And uh, between all the people in person being invited to the event and all the people online encountering it, and we're even going to have a virtual platform where you can meet people, um, like your little 2D gaming character, you walk next to somebody and you're connected via video chat. It's called Gather. And uh, we'll have virtual booths from different vendors. We'll have contests, stages, um, the first ICP job fair. You know, all, all kinds of excitement, you know, all this happening all in one day and in one big go. I mean, I honestly think, first off, I've just been pumped about this. We, we, we've talked to like 50 projects and all of them get me more excited because they get more excited when they hear about this. And uh, everybody's on board. Everyone's game for it. All the projects are going to have big things to announce. There's going to be so many contests, airdrops. We're all so ready to to celebrate ICP right now between the price pump and all the things going on. I, I think we can really blow this up. I think we can get so many more people introduced to and onboarded that that the whole ecosystem will look different after this event, honestly. This goes hand in hand with the the vision of decentralization because like it's going to be, you know, small hubs all around the world, everybody uh, watching and joining like the same event from different parts of the world. I, I love it. I wish there was like a gathering somewhere it's either you guys have to do an event in america and one in europe so which i think is going to be the answer are you planning to do like a live event in 2024 as well or is that going to be in 2025 i would think of it this way it's almost like there will be like six conferences of the size that we had last year happening all over the world on the same day so it's actually even so there's thing of two tiers of meetups so there will be very large meetups that that super dedicated IC people might actually want to fly to or travel to, but it's not going to be a different continent. There'll be, you know, maybe a different country within their same geography. And those would be like for a cone state, we're looking at uh, Berlin and either Miami or Texas. We're not quite sure. So there'll be two big cone state organized meetups, but then like there's going to be a huge meetup. I think uh, it seems to be catalyzing in like London. So it's going to seem like it's going to be a great hotspot because there's a lot of great projects already based in London. And uh, I think that there's already some um, big blockchain groups that look like they're going to do a huge event in India. Uh, it looks like there's going to be another big hub in Indonesia. So there will be some like 200 people plus big events that are worth flying out to that are going to be exciting and have different big project founders and stuff like that. Kind of like the hotspots, but then to make it accessible for everybody, we even have a, a micro grant program. So all the sponsorships that we get from projects, we're basically putting that into the micro, like turning it around and putting it through the micro grant program. So you can get a few hundred dollars to cover the cost of hosting a meetup in your city. If you just love ICP and you want to make sure that your city is included. So if you haven't heard about a meetup in your city, go to you know our website, icp-cc.com. And we have a form there where you can fill it out. And, ba and basically we want to, even if it's just, just imagine, you know, there'll be the huge meetups, but then there'll also be like dozens and dozens of other meetups where it's like a, a student in the university with pizza and they're an on campus with maybe 30 other students and as part of a, a blockchain club. Like, like, that's great, too. We don't know what founders might come out of an event like that. And those students are probably not going to fly out, like, like buy tickets somewhere. But but they can show up. They can learn about ICP. They can they can uh, build those local strong connections. They can maybe start founding teams, right, and, and learn, like, like learn about Motoka Bootcamp. And then, you know, they'll all know how to build dApps within a month, right? Like, like I think this is going to be a huge catalyst for, for building local connections, right? Because it's great to meet a bunch of IC people who are willing to fly out, but there can be huge and tremendous value in meeting the, the local ICP people in your city, right? Like I think the very first person within the ICP ecosystem I ever met was, uh, it was early last year and it was Austin Fothery. He lives in Houston too. So like, like uh, him and I, we had lived within an hour of each other and we both had been devoting years of our life to ICP and we just hadn't met in person until we like, got coffee one day. And so like this event is going to bring together, I think there's like five people in my, uh, within a, an hour drive of me that are into ICP and pretty well known. I have I just haven't met in, um, like, like I haven't met in Texas. I met them in 
and the last year's event in Miami, right? But but like I think you know what if what if a lot of these meetups also become regular ongoing meetups? What if what if a local uh, university club decides, hey, let's meet about ICP once a month? So I think it's going to be a great catalyst. And uh, so don't think of it as there's not one big event this year. Think of it as there's like six big events this year to go to. And I think yeah. that's kind of the right um, the right approach. It's going to be awesome. I love it. So it's more like a hybrid event where there are going to be a few bigger ones around the globe for the people that are willing to go and, you know, can go outside like to a different country and stay there for uh, a couple of days. But you guys are not leaving out those who would otherwise not be able to participate into the exactly. uh, ICP Community Conference, which, which I think is great. Listen, there is so many opportunities on ICP and in Web3 in general that people don't even know about. How can project founders, community members, and sponsors participate to the ICPCC 2020? Yeah, yeah, great. I mean, there's, there's three basic ways. So um, pretty much, you know, not just the community is, is welcome to create meetups. Brands can make their own meetups. So if, if, if a project's like, hey, I want to be the official ICPCC meetup for my city, and, and I, I want to do my own talk outside of the Watts party, and I want to make it a little bit like a mini conference just for me and my brand, uh, you're totally welcome to do that. Just reach out to us. You can DM the main account, uh, ICP underscore CC uh, on X, and uh, we'd we'll love to get in touch with you. And I think there's also a form on the website for that, for getting involved. And then the other way is uh, we're, we're, we want to do this for as many projects as we can. We want to make 30 to 45 second promo videos for as many ICP projects as we can. And that's something that we, we're, we're trying to do completely out of pocket. All you've got to do is capture your footage, capture some screenshots of your, um, of your DAP, and would like to make like a nicely edited like music, like basically a little commercial for you, for that you can reuse after the event. That's just for for promoting your projects because we want to get like ideally like fifty of these and just sprinkle them all throughout the content so that if anybody hits the live stream, they're just saying, oh, they're building that on IC. Oh, they're building that on IC because because people just don't know, right? And and just constantly introducing all the cool stuff happening. So it, you know, if you're a project building on the IC, we'd love to make one of those videos for you. Just reach out to us, DM or fill out the forms. And then the third way is sponsorships. So you know, we paid all of the last event out of pocket. We're paying for all of the operations of this event out of pocket, but. For if, if you if you want to sponsor, we can find ways to highlight your brand even more during the event. Um, you'll be able to get a virtual booth in, in the in the in the virtual um, the the virtual conference like uh, tool gather. But you're also supporting all of the local events in your area. So for example, uh, anybody in India that sponsors, that money is going to go straight back into the um, in, into funding. Like like Blockchain India wants to do a huge event. And it's going to cost a lot of money. So all the sponsorships for any, from any brand in India goes straight to the Blockchain India event that they want to do. So we can make it as big as possible, right? I think same thing with like Asia Pacific. That's going to be done with a lot of partners. So any Asia Pacific brands that that sponsor, not only are they getting the extra exposure, but they're supporting the the celebrations and the the, the parties in, in Asia Pacific. And so, you know, and those are also going to be highlighting their brand and their audience directly. So, I mean, this is... At its very core, at its very heart for us, this is about being as much a community event as possible. And this is a decentralized event. Like by its very nature, everything about this is extremely Web3 flavored. Um, and so, yeah, it's, honestly, this has been a blast and an honor to be part of organizing it. And my hope is that everybody's going to get a lot of energy out of being part of it. And everybody has a chance to be part of it. With the Ethereum integration and with the Bitcoin integration and, you know, with the upcoming, like there is talks of a Solana integration, are you maybe thinking in the future to not be like the ICP community conference and maybe turn into the Web3 community conference, like to have like a global super mega event that, you know, everybody in the crypto space can join? Like, are you guys uh, thinking yeah. about that? I think of ICP is a bit of like a glue of Web3 and, and, and inherently in, in what it is, right? Like ICP is a very inclusive technology um, by the, but just the nature of what it is. So the proper way of celebrating ICP is already going to be multi-chain, right? And uh, one of the models that we pick from uh, is it, we really appreciate how Nier pulls this off. So there's NearCon and they had it in Portugal and they had like a 2000 person event. And it was it was very multi-chain and Web3 based. So you can have an event that's centered around one chain, but celebrating all chains and welcoming all chains. And it can be done. There are models proving that it's possible. And we very, very much want this to be the thing. We want this event this year, not even off in the future, this year. This is the event that you invite your Bitcoin maxi friend to, that you invite your ETH maxi friend to. They're going to be welcomed. They're going to be shown what, what ACP offers them where they are. You don't have to stop being an ETH maxi friend. Just 
realize that ICP has something to offer you, right? And that's all, that's all we're asking for, right? You have to convert and bend and change. Um, we want this to be a very welcoming event. And that, that's why we're also trying to work with influencers that are just general Web3 influencers that are, you know, not focused on any chain and, and, and bringing them in so that we can show their audiences what ICP has to offer their chains. And uh, like I mentioned, Blockchain India before, Blockchain India is not an ICP series. They're one of the biggest blockchain organizations and in, in, in like hubs within India and it's general Web3 blockchain. So I do think of this as a um, just an overall Web3 celebration. And in my mind, what better way to celebrate Web3 than by um, celebrating a, a protocol that unifies, brings it together. And, and really, I think that ICP's place in the tech stack is um, abstracting away the complexity of, of, of multi-chain Web3 from the users. So you can make a dApp that into, that's using Bitcoin and Ethereum and even Solana down the road in the background, but you're just getting an experience that makes sense and solves the problems that you want up here. You don't even have, you might not even know those blockchains are being utilized in the background. That's the future and that's ICP's role in it. And that's an inherently welcoming and inclusive role. Us as a community, as the ICP community should be less tribal, I think, and more welcoming to other uh, communities as well. Although there will always be like those, you know, ecosystem wars, I guess, because everybody is holding some token and everybody says, their token is the best and your token sucks. And unfortunately, mm -hmm. that is crypto at the moment. So we will have to see how we can work, you know, to get everybody together. And I think with the tools provided by Definity for the Internet Computer Protocol, that's how when other chains will start integrating ICP tech and it will benefit them, people will change their view on ICP as, you know, the whole ecosystem yeah. uh, together will, will change it. That actually touches on the branding a little bit. So the branding for this event is ICP Alien Tech Web3 Invasion. So we have like a little, a cute little alien character. I think it's gonna be really fun. Like I wanna go to one of the events dressed up like an alien. I'm gonna fully embrace it. But, but, but the idea is like Web3 itself, yes, we all have some tribalism on tokens that we invested in, right? And that, that's a financial basis for motivations. But I think that when we zoom out, why did we all care about Web3 to begin with? What was it all about? Web3 is a bit of a revolution. Like, like it is, it is a technology and a, and, a, and a social and an economic revolution itself. It's us saying, look, the world is not running the way we like, but we want to be able to have a hand in changing that or doing something about it. Like we want to be able to have some power, like, like we, the people want to take back control, but we don't want to do it with violence. We're going to roll up our sleeves, use our brains and create a consensus protocol where essentially when you think about what, what crypto is. We invented a chain, a, a language where you cannot lie. It's a, it's a programming language. It's a code where you cannot lie when you speak it. So just think about what that means. That's an entirely new base tool for organizing people and resources that's never existed in history before. So let's get out of our tribalism, zoom out and realize that we're part of a revolution. We're part of an invasion that has meaning that's important beyond any one chain. And let's get pragmatic about it. Let's stop uh, getting distracted by the shiny objects of just like, like, would there be anything that the elites would prefer more than us wasting money on meme tokens? Nothing against that. Like that has its place and that's fine. But that's not where I was going when I started my Web3 journey. And it wasn't where anyone ultimately wants to go. But we're, what we're doing here is we're all collectively being part of building a better world. And I think that idea will ultimately be what unifies us. And that idea should be, it, it has been pervasive within our ecosystem and it needs to continue to be pervasive. And events like this that are just inclusive by their nature is going to be part of catalyzing it within our culture. Are you guys maybe planning to do uh, an NFT collection for this ICPCC in 2024 or maybe in the future? Couldn't say it is an eight person team and we're already doing this uh, <laughs> like nine hours of reduction in this huge event. Um, we had talked about doing an NFT collection, but what we where I instead are working through is with partners. So all I can say right now is that there will be some types of tokens and NFT collections that will will be uh, like kind of like like partners taking the towards. I'm not going to say who yet because I don't think I can announce it yet. But um, but yeah, you don't want to miss this event because there will be Web3 assets involved. It's going to be fun and we want to have multiple contests. So it's going to, it's going to be one of those things where you're going to probably, you know, if you're a diehard ICP fan, you're probably going to be glued to um, your screen and or going to the events all throughout the day. 
because you won't want to miss all the opportunities that are going to be coming out um, from various different big brands across the space. Basically, it'll be easier to tell you what brands, if any, are not involved in this at this point. Like any brand that you've heard about with an ICP is involved in this. You can just assume by default. I mean, I've had meetings with almost all of them. I've had like almost 10 meetings a day for three weeks now. Um, and they're all it's super stoked and on board and doing different things. Um, but there will be a code and state airdrop. And that's all I can tease at the moment because I need to work out some stuff with lawyers and, and, and build a white paper and all of this other exciting stuff. But basically, I think that when you find out what this airdrop allocation is going to be for attendees at the event, it's going to absolutely blow everything out of the water and be one of the most exciting events of the entire year. You don't want to miss for sure. So the projects that want to get involved in ICPCC, what is the next steps for them? Yeah, so for projects or just people who want to attend, the the next step is you can actually register today. You can go to our website at icp-cc.com and there's a, it should be a link on there to register. And you can also follow us on X at icp underscore cc. And uh, I think on a recent post, we have the first like promo vid for the event. And, uh, and on that post is a link to the registration. So, um, so that's the way for people, you know, like the first registration is the first step. You'll get emails about meetups in your area and like gather and other ways to get involved with the event. And for projects, we have, you can DM me personally, you can DM the main uh, event on IX and uh, we'll get, we're very responsive. So if we haven't talked to you yet, if we haven't had a, a call with you yet, you know, get on our calendar. And uh, yeah, no, let's all let's all be part of this. Let's all do some big work for the ecosystem. Let's all grow uh, ICP and spread the word for it. And uh, yeah, get out there and build some some cool stuff together. I think this was crazy to organize all of this, and especially like with the small meetups all around the world. This must have been crazy to take care of it. But listen, with a great team and a great mission, you are bound to succeed. So I really love the idea of ICPCC. And I'm looking forward to see on the 10th of May, the ICP Community Conference 2024 is going to be live. All the links will be in the description below. Thank you very much, Isaac, for tuning in in this podcast. If there is anything else that you want to say to the community, now is the time. All I wanted to say is thank you for being part of the community. It, it means everything that this is what Web3 is for. This is what ICP is for. And so, uh, yeah, but go out there, build connections, meet people, do great stuff. It doesn't have to be to this event. It's in any way you can. Connect with those around you because we're all here for something important and it matters. So talk to you later, everybody. See you later. And uh, yeah, let's go celebrate on May 10th. Mark your calendars. It is on the 10th of May. Make sure you follow them and you register for this event. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.